Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Dodge Durango, we're going to be showing you how to install the Kurt trailer wiring. But before we get into that, I want you to take a minute, check it out, and make sure it's going to work for you. The Durango, you know, being a full size SUV, it's pretty capable, and people use them to do a lot of different things, pulling trailers around and, and everything else. And if that's what you plan on doing, you're going to need a way to illuminate all those lights. Not only to just keep you safe, but it's required by law as well. So definitely want to stay legal. And that's uh, where this is going to come into play. So it's a four-way flat type connector, really common type of connector for those smaller, medium-sized trailers, uh, things like that. And you'll be able to plug in and power up the lights. So you'll get your turn signals, your tail lights, and your brake lights. So all of your basic functions will be covered. One of the nice things about the Durango, especially if you have a hitch setup like this, which a lot of people do, is you know, you're able to put that behind there, put the panel on, and keep everything hidden. So that's pretty cool. If you got a hitch that hangs down below, you can always get brackets to, uh, to permanently mount this up. But it's totally up to you. A lot of people do um, end up using a seven-way and a brake controller to uh, you know, pull some bigger trailers around and campers and things like that. And if that's one thing you're looking to do, this will be one of the parts or pieces that you'll need to make that happen. And all the other components you can find here at eTrailer, like I said, if that's what you're trying to do. But other than that, at the end of the day, you know, not a bad kit. I was uh, a little disappointed. Uh, one of the wires, they kind of shortchange you a little bit, at least in my opinion. If they can make it like a foot longer to make mounting up your module box a little bit easier, that'd be awesome, but kind of is what it is. Uh, that was probably one of the trickier parts of the install, honestly, because it's just so tight up there. But uh, if you'd like to see how the install is done, feel free to follow along. We'll go ahead and hook this up together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the back of our Durango. And first thing we need to do is remove our tail lights. So if you open up your hatch, that'll give you access to two push pin fasteners that we can get removed. Here's those fasteners. To get them removed, you can take a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver will work as well. But you just get underneath the head of the fastener and pull it out. And I'm just gonna pull back and the base will come out with it. If it separates, not a big deal. You can just pry behind the base to pop it out and then just kind of click those two back together. So I'll do the same thing for this one here. And I want to mention uh, anything we do to this side of the vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. To get the light out, I put some painter's tape here because you might have to use a plastic tool to kind of apply some pressure to pop this out. But what I like to do is just kind of grab it by hand and just kind of work it back and forth to help loosen things up. And then we can get our trim tool in there. And the reason for this is to get behind, there's some plastic uh, alignment tabs in there that we can release. And once those are released, kind of carefully work the light back to free it. And once we have it free, we can disconnect it, push down on the center of that tab, and pull the two apart. Now we can set our light off to the side. Over on the passenger side, with the tail light out, we're gonna have a small pocket here where we can get some wires and stuff through. So we're gonna take our T-connector that has a yellow and brown wire and feed that down. And pretty much everything is gonna get fed down through there. Uh, really with one exception, and that will be our green T connector. So once I kind of push this through here, give us some more room to work. I'm gonna take our module box, push that down through there as well. And all this eventually will be on the underside of the vehicle. Our green T connector, you're going to take it. All right, one side will plug into the factory wiring. 
And then the other end, if we grab our tail light, we'll just plug right into there. Once this is plugged in though, we can reinstall our tail light the opposite way that we removed it. Back over on the driver's side, we're just gonna kind of prepare ourselves here because eventually that yellow T connector will get pulled up into here and plugged in. So I'm just gonna take a fish wire. This is a piece of tubing. You can use a coat hanger, whatever you got. And I'm just gonna drop this down. That way when we're down there, we can tape that T connector wire to it and just pull it right up into place whenever we're ready to do that. Now underneath the vehicle, we're here on the passenger side. This is where our converter box and our wires came down. And I just loosely routed some of them. The four-way flat wire and the yellow T-connector wire just run along through here. Like I said, this is all loose right now, but you know, eventually we'll come back and zip tie it all up and everything else. But that just runs up and over our hitch where I have the connector actually just secured and zip tied to our hitch. The yellow T connector wire takes that same path essentially, runs along through here. And when you do this and end up securing everything, you know, you wanna avoid any hot or moving parts. So I tape that T connector to our fish wire. I was able to pull up on our fish wire and get our T connector up into position. And just like the other side, one end will plug into the factory connector there, other side into the tail light, and now we're able to reinstall this opposite way. Now we can take the black wire coming out of the module box. We're gonna strip the insulation back some. Give that wire a twist. Then we can take the length of power wire that they give you, strip back that end of the insulation as well, connect the two. So I decided to use a heat shrink buck connector because it ends seal up and just provide a little more protection against corrosion and things like that. You can upgrade to them if you want, but the ones that come in the kit will, will work fine. Place that buck connector over the bare end of the wire. And crimp it down. With that being the heat shrink, I'll come back with a heat source and seal up the ends. ahead and secured our ground wire. So that's the white one with the pre-attached ring terminal. We actually have this metal flange here which works out really well. Just took the provided self-tapping screw and uh, secured it to that sheet metal. To secure our converter box, it, it's really difficult to kind of see and tight to get into, so bear with us here. Not a whole lot of spots to go with it. So this isn't my favorite setup, but it's really all we have to work with. I just took it, zip tied it to, there's a piece of factory wiring there, and then there's that metal shield um, that I was able to kind of lodge our converter box in behind to get it secure. So again, they just don't really give you a ton of extra wire to be able to put this in a, in a, in a really good spot. So it's working with what we got, and, and that's how it turned out. So now I went ahead and routed our power wire up into the engine compartment. That way we could hook it up to a power source. And the path that I took was really tight and I have a whole lot of wire to work with. I'm kind of just programmed to run wires along the driver's side of her vehicle. If I had to do it over again, uh, I would take the same path essentially that I'm about to show you, but I would just stay on the passenger side and do it that way. So uh, like I said, you can get it to work, but it'll be close. Our wire just runs along here. And then up through here. And just continues along. Our wire goes up and over subframe and pay attention to this part too when you're doing this. You know, keep it away from any moving parts so it don't get damaged. But it's going to drop down and then it starts to get quite a bit easier now. Uh, the wire just runs along our pinch weld here. all the way towards the front. And like I said, essentially, if you were to go on the passenger side, it's the same deal, you know, nothing really too different about it. Whenever you start to run it up though, if you peel it, uh, or peel that wheel well liner back a little bit, there's a, a, a grommet that 
you can push the wire up through to get into the engine compartment. Up in the engine compartment now, our wire comes up through that opening and routed it over to the passenger side. So I kind of just tucked it behind our weather stripping all the way along through here into this opening where our positive battery supply is. There's our power supply. Here's where our wire comes. And I used a buck connector to uh, connect it to our fuse holder, which is included. And then a ring terminal on the other end of the fuse holder. Remove this stud using a 12 millimeter socket, ring terminal over it, tighten that back down. Once it's tight, we can then place the fuse inside of the holder there and then test our wiring to make sure that it works properly. To test the wiring, I'm using this tester, which I definitely recommend as opposed to just plugging into your trailer. So if your trailer has any issues, it might mislead you, mislead you into thinking it's something on this side, but we'll turn on our tail lights, our turn signal, our right turn signal, and our brakes. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kirk trailer wiring on our 2022 Dodge Durango.